Jeremy and the Sleeger by Will Reed Chapter 5 Good News Goes Bad What? cried Dad, fork clattering onto his plate. You play Cinderella, a boy? Oh, Beaumonts have finally gone to the dogs. Gravy smeared over his beard as Dad packed a large lump of steak somewhere inside it. Jeremy miserably pushed his meal around the plate. I'll call them tomorrow and get them to change their minds. Don't you worry, boy. I'll sort this mess out, Dad said, half muffled by the visibly mashed up steak. No, Jeremy blurted out. What? You don't actually want to be Cinderella, do you? Jeremy wilted under Dad's aggressive question. Well, uh, I... Mum sat down to dinner, taking a small spoonful of mash, glancing between Jeremy and Dad. I'm sure they've just made a mistake. More gravy, dear, she offered. They haven't made a mistake. Jeremy offered the blue card with the gold writing. Dad snatched it and, after a brief glance, screwed it up and threw it at the bin. Jeremy watched it bounce off the side and roll. His most special private dream crumpled up on the floor next to an old blob of ketchup. Dad started droning on about how this generation are namby-pamby sissies. But Jeremy couldn't stop staring at the glittering letters he could still read. The curly writing was pretty, and he'd won that card using his own talent. He'd shown Miss Fairley his dream and she had been impressed. I am going to be Cinderella, he burst out at Dad, and it's not a mistake. I was chosen to play her, and I'm going to be her. He darted from the room and thumped up the stairs, with the background music of Dad's greatest hits, including Come back here, boy! and You're not a weak little girl! Jeremy slammed the door to his bedroom. The faces of Zorro, Batman and Captain Jack Sparrow stared back at him from their frayed-edged posters. He'd talk to them sometimes, pretending they were real and he was one of them. Their strong, heroic faces looked like no one could make them feel small. He lingered over the Batman poster, focusing for a change on Wonder Woman standing at his side. He'd never really thought he could be her before. He'd always supposed that he could only be a boy superhero. She was seriously strong, though, much more powerful than Batman. He was just a person with lots of money to buy gadgets, but she was an Amazonian princess with proper superpowers. What was Cinderella like, he wondered. He'd need to understand her as much as possible if he was going to be her, just like when he was a pirate or soldier or any of the other characters he'd been before. I like the Green Goblin personally. Jeremy jumped and looked over sharply. Laying back on Jeremy's bed, its sticky head on Jeremy's pillow was the Sleeger. Get off my bed! Jeremy snapped at it disgustedly. The creature peeled itself off, tendrils of slime snapping off the pillow. It slopped and plopped off to a chair, leaving little footprints behind it on Jeremy's bedsheets. Sorry, the Sleeger said, smiling slimily. I couldn't help but hear some raised voices. Dad doesn't want you to be Cinderella then. Jeremy shook his head, looking sad. That's OK. As I said before, I'm here to help you. The creature squelched over and sat at Jeremy's feet, patting a shoe with its small, sticky hand. I'm like the, the genie in Aladdin, or your own magical fairy, just like Cinderella. I'm your fairy godsleeger. Now, you shut yourself up into bed and have a lovely sleep, and you shall go to the ball. That's a special sneaker promise. Sorry, did I spit on you? It wiped at Jeremy's shoe, leaving streaks. Jeremy realised he started to feel fond of the revolting sleeger. It was right, he thought. 
It wasn't every day that a magical creature came into your life to help you with your dream. Especially when the Sleeger joined him brushing teeth and used Dad's toothbrush. He'd had to laugh when he saw the dribbling mess the toothbrush looked when the Sleeger put it back in the cup. The little creature seemed to have arrived just at the right time. It was quiet and calm the next morning over breakfast. Dad was still in bed and Mum clattered away over the kitchen sink. Jeremy usually enjoyed these moments the best at home. With just him and Mum, she was so peaceful about everything. Despite the calm, today he gobbled at his egg and toast, hoping to be out of the house before Dad awoke. Thump, thump, thump. Jeremy felt his blood pump, dreading the argument when Dad finally walked in. There was silence for a fraction of a second until Jeremy and Mum burst out laughing. Dad looked suddenly enraged. How dare you laugh at me, he bellowed. Jeremy couldn't help himself. Dad being angry seemed to make it all the funnier. Mum was no better. She straightened herself up and pulled Dad over to the mirror, where his face turned to utter horror. Dad's pale face was plastered in very poorly applied makeup. There was lipstick smeared over his lips in a wobbly line. Foundation was blotched around, much of it stuck in thick clumps around his beard and it was finished off with cheerful, bright red blush on both cheeks. He looked like a clown who'd put on makeup whilst bouncing on a trampoline. You did this! A furious dad swung around, glaring at Jeremy. The bright red makeup suddenly took on a terrifying, distorted quality, making Jeremy jump back. I think we'd better go, Mum said hurriedly, ushering Jeremy out of the room and towards the front door.